Hi, my name is Christine Lee, and I'm the application engineer at MathWorks. Today, we are going to kick off a video series on electrical power system design. This video series will focus on how to use SimScape Electrical for many different uh, electrical power system design applications. It will cover microgrid and energy storage, the simulation of switch mode power supply, and some trade-offs for electrical system design. For this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to the electric system modeling with SimScape Electrical. This will be a good start point for those of you who are new to SimScape Electrical and want to do some modeling and simulations. And if you are interested in other topics that we just mentioned, please check out the following session in this video series. Okay, so this is the agenda. First, I will give you an overview of the SimScape Electrical, like what is it and why we need it. Next, I will build a model of a simple electrical power system with SimScape Electrical to work with some essentials. And we also will cover the topic like how to choose a software or how to change the model fidelities. Finally, I will share with you some resources and technical support to help you get started. Okay, so we know that there are lots of benefits for the modeling and simulation of electrical power system. And the very important part here is how to build a model that can meet the requirements. Everyone have different situation. You may know the dynamics of your system really well, or you may have no idea of the inside of your system, but can get some data from it, right? That's why we have multiple methods for the modeling of the dynamic systems from the first principle based to the data driving based. And as you can see here, MathWorks has many different tools, right? Um, but specifically for today's topic, you may already know that Simulink is a graphical based platform for the first principle modeling, which means you generally need to derive the equations to build the model. However, Sometimes it may not be realistic for us to you know, derive the equations. It might be very time consuming or we don't know much information about it. Right? That's why the SimScape uh, products can help us. So SimScape is on the top of Simulink for physical system modeling. It is still used uh, you know, based on the uh, first principle modeling methods but instead of deriving the equation by yourself, it gives you many pre-built physical components to build the system much easier and quicker. So SimScape has uh, pre-built components for many multiple domains, like electrical, mechanical, thermal, and more. But those are very fundamentals, right? How if we want to do more advanced electrical system modeling? That's where the SimScape Electrical can help us. So SimScape Electrical is one of the extension from the SimScape fundamental for the electrical power system design. It provides the components libraries for the modeling and simulating the electronic, mechatronic, and electrical power systems. It includes models of semiconductors, motors, and components for applications uh, such as smart grid, renewable energy system, or electromechanical systems. You can use those components to build your model for many different simulations or analysis, especially if uh, your electrical power system needs to integrate with other domains such as mechanical, hydronic, thermals, which are all pretty co common, right? You can use the components from the SimScape fundamental or other add-ons to build the whole system. Another highlight is that SimScape Electrical is on the top of Simulink, so you can leverage MATLAB and Simulink for your system level design, such as design control algorithms in Simulink or do some data analysis in MATLAB. Especially similar to MATLAB Simulink, SimScape Electrical also support SQL generation. So if you're interested in things like real-time testing, like hardware in the loop, this is also something you can do with SimScape Electrical. All right, that's an overview of SimScape Electrical. Now let's go to MATLAB to see how to use SimScape Electrical. We will cover three topics. First, 
I will build a simple model and work you through some SimScape electrical essentials. And then we will talk about how to parameterize or change the model fidelity and how to choose the right solvers. All right, so this is MATLAB. And to get started build the model, we need to first open the Simulink. To open up, we first will see the Simulink start page. Here you can create a black model or use some templates from the list. You can also access lots of shipping examples that can be related to your design. Also some learning resources here that you can access. For example, the SimScape on-ram can help you get started with SimScape and also the circuit simulation on-ram is another new courses. You can always get started with a black model, but here we can see that SimScape also gives you a lot of uh, templates for different domains. Basically, it will have some price settings that is good for this type of applications and comes with some essential blocks. So here we will just create a block from this SimScape electrical templates. So when we open up this model, we can see that it comes with some uh, initial blocks like the solver configuration block, the ground reference signal block, and some unit block to convert Simulink and the Simsky uh, signals. And we have some scope to and the spectrum analyzer to see some results. We also here have some uh, hyperlinks that you can check out some documentation or the reference. Okay, so now we don't have anything here, um, but I want to build a simple power uh, system. So first, of, first step is we can open this Simulink library. So let me just uh, uh, move this window side by side. Okay, so this when I open the Simulink library, you can see that we have the Simulink fundamental library. It comes with a lot of uh, blocks that you can use to build your model. But for the SimScape, it also comes with uh, the libraries. So SimScape has its fundamental libraries and some extended ones like uh, electrical is what we are going to cover today, but also some others. The fundamental library already gave you a lot of uh, elements that you can use for your design, like electrical, it has some uh, uh, like a capacitor, diode, a resistor, all the stuff that you can build very fundamental or simple electrical systems, right? Um, but for more advanced design, we also need to move to the SimScape Electrical Library. So for the SimScape Electrical Library, uh, we have many uh, subsections that covers like control or semiconductors or passive blocks or even integrated circuit and so on and so forth that you can use. A quick mention here is SimScape Electrical actually has two uh, main part. All the stuff here are from SimScape Electrical core library, but we also have the other um, part is called the specialized power system. Uh, and this one is generally used for large uh, power distribution system modeling. This will not be what we are going to cover today. We will be focused on the SimScape electrical core library. To get started, we can add a voltage source, right? So I want to add some uh, AC sources. So I can go to the source. Uh, library and you can see from the list we have many things like a battery uh, or other like controlled or not controlled voltage or current sources and some like a few cells load flow sources and more right so here i will just start from simple i'm going to just add this very simple voltage source for three phase right after i added it i can just drag and drop so let me first just open the all the name to keep the name uh, block name be there. And then this is a voltage source. For every block, when you add it, you may not sure what is it and what is it in, and the ports, right? Does it how can connect it? So a really good uh, resource is here is when you double click every block, you can open a documentation from here. 
hey, when you open the documentation, you can see that it will just give you all the information about this block, like how it has been built, all the equations under the hood. Especially you can navigate to like ports, and then you will understand what is this port prison for, right? Like N is prison to a Y center. And to the parameterization, every prime has been explained. This is the documentation, and for this one, we will know that the prime is here, right? It gives me a voltage, um, and I can set up others, but let's now just keep it as a uh, default. So I need to first connect this N to the ground um, block, and next, after I have this uh, three-phase voltage source, I also want to add a, a load. So I can see here in the passive, I actually have many different types of passive block I can add. I'm going to just add a very simple like RLC load. I'm going to just add a three-phase RLC uh, three-phase um, block, and I connect it to the network. So next, after I have this uh, load added, I also want to add a converter to convert the AC to DC. You can go ahead and see that we have this uh, semiconductor and converter sections. You can go ahead to see that we have some dialed GTO or some H bridge, half bridge, uh, IGBT MOSFET. You can use all of them based on where you need. But here I will just go ahead to go to the converter and pick up the one that I need. So I have the rectify. Uh, there's the average one, but um, we'll use it later. But here let's just use a very regular one. This is a rectify for the three phase. So I just uh, drag it and drop to add it. At. This uh, rectify, and then I can just connect it. Right now, I have this uh, DC side. For the DC side, I want to add a resistor. So instead of go to the library to pick it up, if you know the name, a really quick way to add it is on this canvas, any empty places, double click, you can tape the name. And then you will have see that there is some uh, integers recommends here, right? You can choose the one. And uh, just uh, connect it based on what you learned from your uh, textbook. Okay, and that's it. So now I have all the system B connected. I'm going to just uh, run the simulation. So I was just uh, going to just change the uh, simulation time to 0.05 seconds. And uh, for the solver, here I will just set up the solver. We will cover it uh, later, but here I'm going to just uh, use a uh, solver um, by default. Okay, so next I can run the simulation. As you can see, it will compile and then it will just uh, really quick. After I run the simulation, I definitely want to realize the results. But how can I do it? So if you are familiar with Simulink, you will know that you can use a scope to, to just uh, branch any signals in your model. But Simscape is a little bit different because it's um, provided you those physical components. Right, so those are all physical components you cannot directly drag and connect to a scope. Instead, you will need a sensor to mirror any signals you want to mirror. I can go to the sensor uh, section. You will see that we have lots of uh, sensor available for you to use, from simple to very advanced one that it can uh, you can use. But here I want to pick a very simple one to mirror this uh, three-phase current and voltage. And here we go, right? So we have this uh, current and the voltage be available, right? So to to add it, I can just uh, drag and drop, and I want to fit it in here or here. So let me just uh, add it to here. I just need to break this line and connect it. So now, as you can see, with the sensor, it will give me two ports, the voltage and the current. Right. So for the voltage, I can connect it to here. It will convert the color line, which is Simscape signal, into Simulink, that I can use a scope to see that. 
And uh, for the current, I'm going to just uh, connect it to the spectrum analyzer. And next, I can rerun the simulation. I can now have this. So this looks not really good. I can just uh, change the, the sample time to a little bit small. And uh, here, I'm going to use one microsecond instead. And let's rerun the simulation to see the results. Okay, so now it's much better. Okay, we can see some voltage for three phase being, being displayed here. And uh, we can also open this spectrum analyzer. And it will show me some frequency domain uh, analyzing results. Okay, so that's that's about how we can use Snipsky Electrical Library Block to build the, the a simple system model, and we can use the scope to verify the data. We can use the scope, but sometimes we want to monitor many other signals so use scopes for each of them will make our model looks a little bit messy and not very convenient right so Sinsky comes with a logging system that you can use this Sinsky to explore to verify all the signals in your uh, circuit so we can just uh, open this uh, Sinsky Results Explorer, and you can see it listed all the components you used in your model. And for each of them, it will have some data you can see, right? I can double click, it will display it on the right side. This is my current, my voltage, right? And also, it has something that has been calculated. And it also comes with the automatic unit system that you can convert it to see the results. Okay, so that's about the second method to uh, visualize our simulation results. And, you know, sometimes you may use Simlink as well to build the whole system. So you may have some Simsky uh, data, but also Simlink data as well. So instead of go here and there to check out the results, a really convenient way is to use the data inspector. So you can log all the data you want to see. So for example, here, I'm going to just log this data. I can just log it either from here and name it as a, like a VABC. I can also log all the Sinsky data that you see in your Sinsky Explorer in this data inspector. Right, to do so, I'm just going to set up quickly. It's in the model settings. We have a Simscape section, so I can just log the record data in the Simlink data inspector. And next, I can run the simulation again. And then you can see this, this data inspector, it will load some new data. I can open it up. Those are all from the model, the, the data you, you saw in the uh, Simscape Explorer. But this is similar data we, we have enabled, right? And uh, we can see that for the, for the Simscape, it's all here that you can check it out. So this is a data inspector, and we can use it uh, more in our later section. Okay, good. So that's about the, the first part. Everything essential has been covered. Next is about the model prime visualization and fidelity. So you can change the model parameters, right? For each of the blocks, just open it up. There will be something there that you can change from the, uh, the settings. Right. This is a way to parameterize the system, but sometimes you may want to leverage the fidelity to a more like a detailed model. This is also something that Simsky Electrical can support. So you can use Simsky Electrical to do the a full range of fidelity modeling. And uh, I'm going to use a model here to show 
show you how it works. So here I will just open the second model, which is about the fidelity comparison. So this is a model that almost the same as what we just created, um, but I just add some sensors in each side to mirror the, the voltage and the current. The difference here is about the rectifying. What we used before is a regular rectifying, and here I also do the same model but change it to an average manual rectifying. So what is the difference of those two? Those are all from Synscape Electrical, but the re uh, rectifying block, it can capture those switching effects of the diode. However, the average manual run, it's, uh, it's a little bit lower fidelity, so it does not capture those switching effects. So we can just run the simulation to see the results. But first, let me just load some initial data that will be needed by this model okay and then back to here we can run a simulation and then next time I will just compare the voltage and the current from the two different uh, models to see if there are any difference I can compare like the, the voltage or current um, probably the current I can click here to open the current. So as you can see, this is the current and this is the voltage. For the current, this is the average current. We have three phase. This is the one, and we have also have like a I A B C average two and three, which are not the two phases. I will just add the one with the regular rectify uh, and the same scope and the we can just focus on this one. So you can see that the one with average value rectifying gives you a very small uh, a sine wave. However, the one with the uh, regular rectifying captures those switching events. So that's a difference. And uh, you can also compare others here, right? So the main reason that we change the fidelity of the model level is to run efficient simulation to our answer some specific uh, engineering question we're interested. For example, those average VNU converters or inverters, they are typically used when we are focused on the system level simulations. Um, but for more detailed, uh, you know, uh, converters like the one we are using here, it will capture the switching events. It also will have a longer simulation time. Okay. So you can definitely build your model based on what you need. So that's about uh, changing the model fidelities. And the next topic I want to cover is the solver. We have set it up the solver a little bit in our first part when we build the model. But here I have an example to compare the different solvers and how the solver settings will impact our simulation results. So as you can see here, we have two same model. The difference is the left side we're using a global solver, which is actually a single link solver. And the right side, we are using a Synscape solver itself to simulate or solve this uh, circuit. For this circuit, it's very simple. We have a DC voltage source connected with a resistor, and we are using a voltage to marry the voltage in the network. And this one uh, network has a simple switch that has been controlled by the PWM end wave. And, and this one, we don't have the solver being selected, so it will use the simulating solver. And the right side, we checked the local solver settings, so it will just uh, uh, use the Synscape solver. And then we can run the simulation. And then compare how it looks like with the PWM and also the voltage. First, for the PWM waves, we can open it up. It looks pretty close. We don't have see any difference. So both solvers can capture those PWM up and down uh, curves. Let's see the voltage. For the voltage. 
it's definitely different, right? The blue line, which is using the simulink global solver, it can capture those minor steps. However, the, the yellow uh, line, which is the Simsky local solver one, it does not capture those process timing uh, information. Okay, so that's the difference. Uh, the reason is actually because here we are using a pretty large sample time for the Sinsky local solver, right? To, to, to get it better, we can change the sample time. So here I'm going to use a smaller sample time, which is uh, 1e minus 6, which is 1 microsecond. When I type it in, it will apply it, and I can rerun the simulation in this time. Right. So as you can see, this time is better, right? The, the Thinscape local solver also can capture those uh, detailed, the small uh, step uh, information. So this is a comparison of the solver. So solver is important for the simulation, but when you get started, I'm not sure which solver is good for your settings. You can always keep the local solver unchecked and to try to use a simulating global solver. And uh, you can see this is the global solver we are currently using. You can open the settings from there or go to the modeling and uh, settings to choose the one that you can use. You can let the Simulink automatically choose the solver or you can use your own uh, preferred solvers from the list based on your models. And then, then you can try to run the simulation and compare to see if that's what you need. I'll just close it. So the last thing I want to cover uh, is about the control design. So we mentioned in the beginning that uh, Simulink is a plan you can use all the tools to build your model. And for example, you can use Simulink to design control for your power electronic systems, which is a really common use case. So here, this is an example that I would not dive to the detail, but I want to show that we have created a AC system and DC system with a ACDC converter in between of them. And this has been built with Simsky Electrical. And uh, we have some like batteries, fuel cells, generators. For example, for the battery converter and controls, we have some uh, system, but for the control, we actually using the Simulink. Uh, fundamental library blocks to build this uh, PID controls. Right. You can do more on um, advanced, right? Like, uh, we have this um, here, we have the ACDC converter, which are pretty similar to what we created in the first step. But for the active and the reactive power control, we actually uh, leverage Simulink to do the PID control. So this is a really good thing, right? You can leverage all the uh, tools to build the model and run the simulations for what you need. All right, now let's back to the slides. So in this video, we introduced the Simscape Electrical and used a demo to show you how we use Simscape Electrical. And finally, I want to share with you some useful resources and MathWorks technical supporting to help you use this tool. So we have many different types of engineering support to help you, such as the trainings, consultings, and also our technical support. So if you are interested in any of those support, please check out the website for more information. We also have some trainings. For example, we have the on-ramps, which are free uh, trainings that you can get started with different tools. We also have the paid trainings, and here is some for the Simulink or the Control, Simscape, and State Flow. Please check out those links to explore more. Uh, another very important thing is the shipping examples. So Simscape Electrical has a lot of shipping examples, cover many different applications, and we are keeping adding more in each releases. So please check out to see if you can find any useful examples that is close to your design. Thank you, that's all about the video.